Sing your 
proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us sing our kindness, and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits, our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. That with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of person ought you be? Conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming day, the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. salvation of God.
the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it was written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. People of the whole Judean countryside and the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sin. John was clothed in camel chair with a hundred belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> blessing to be at your church. My name is Father Joseph Aitona from the Fathers of Mercy, and I'm here to preach your parish mission, which begins tonight at 7 p.m. The Fathers of Mercy are missionary preachers located in South Union, Kentucky. South Union has a population of about 50. I actually think there are more cows in that small little town than people. But this is my first time in Madison, so I'm glad to be here at your church. Now, what does a parish mission have to do with you? What does it have to do with me as the missionary preacher? Well, it's very simple. I'm here to remind each and every single one of you of your life's goal. Getting to heaven. Now, if I were to ask you how often you thought of heaven within this past day, or this past week, or maybe even this past month, God willing, it's more than once. Hopefully that's why you're here in this church right now, not simply because it's a commandment or a precept, or because your parents force you to, but because you love God and you want to go to heaven. If heaven isn't any better than our life here on earth, why even go to church every week? Why even work and try your best to get there? You know, I'm blessed as a missionary. I go all around the country preaching. I was actually in Australia a couple years ago. And usually after I'm done preaching, if there's a school attached to the church, I like to go into the classrooms and ask the students questions about heaven to see what they know. And after I ask a series of questions, they ask questions right back at me and they'll say, Father, if you're talking about heaven, I want to know whether my dog, Fido, will be there when I get there. I want to know if I'll be able to play my favorite sports, basketball, football, soccer, someone actually asked me, will there be high waves to surf on in heaven? Will I be able to eat my favorite food, they said. Usually at that age, it's pizza. Will I be able to fly? And I think the most important question, at least at that age, is Will I be able to see and talk to my loved ones who have passed before me in heaven? And all of these are good questions. Hopefully you know the answers to these questions. If not, it's okay. I'm here to help. But before we talk about heaven, we also have to mention the three of the other four last things. That's death, Judgment 
and hell. Now, I say these things certainly not to scare anyone here in this church, but it is my duty as a missionary to preach about them. Now, I know I'm not telling you anything new, that as all of you know, we will all pass at one point in our life. It is something that we cannot avoid. And when we die, our souls will separate from our bodies, and then we will be judged by Jesus Christ. It's what you call the particular judgment. If we die in the stage of God's sanctifying grace, then He will deem us worthy to go to heaven. Some of us will have to pass through purgatory first, some longer than others, but we will eventually get to heaven. If we die in the state of mortal sin, then we will be damned to hell. Now, I see this knowing that Jesus is the Savior by His death on the cross, by His blood being shed. He has opened the gates of heaven for each and every single one of us. He doesn't want anyone to go to hell. But, if they are damned to hell, they have chosen by their own free will to serve Satan for themselves rather than God. Now, hell, for some odd reason, people think that hell is more of a place, a specific location, as if you can get a map of the United States of America and see that it's a city in Southern California. Well, as bad as that place can get, that's where I grew up, it's not there. Although someone did tell me during one mission that hell is definitely a city in Michigan. <laughs> Either way, the hell that Jesus speaks of in the Gospels is not necessarily a specific place. It's more of a state of being. It's a state of being completely deprived of the one thing that can satisfy us as human beings, namely God. So hell is the eternal separation from God, from goodness, from truth, from love. If I could use human terms to describe something like that, obviously it's hard to describe hell, I would say hell is like being absolutely starving and having no food whatsoever to eat. Being thirsty and never having a drink to quench your thirst. Being told a good joke and having no humor to laugh. Hell is like being isolated and lonely and having no friends or family to speak to for all eternity. And worst of all, it's to use your free will to serve Satan and the devils rather than God. I certainly don't recommend that place to anyone here. Now that we've got the bad news out of the way, let's talk about heaven. If you know your scripture, St. Paul is very clear when he describes heaven. He says, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it so much as dawned on man what God has prepared for those who love him. We cannot even fathom with our finite minds how good it will be in heaven when we see God face to face. If you could think of your favorite day here on earth, Maybe for some, your wedding day, or better yet, your honeymoon. Maybe for some adults when they graduated from college and got a good job. For some high school students when they went to the prom. Or for some children when they got their favorite video game. Whatever it is, think of your favorite day here on earth. Multiply that by about a million for all eternity. And we have a little grasp of how good it will be in heaven when we see God face to face. Uh, Jesus took St. Peter, St. James, and St. John up Mount Tabor, 
and he was transfigured. He was glorified, and they got a glimpse of what heaven would be like. And St. Peter said, Lord, it is good that we are here. If I may make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. In other words, I am completely satisfied seeing you in all of your glory. So some of the questions like, will your dog, or what do you have here in Ohio, your horse, will your horse be in heaven, God willing, if you get there? Well, the church hasn't said one way or another whether our pet will be there. Will you be able to eat your favorite food? Well, that's debatable, but the last time I checked, it was called a heavenly banquet. So I'm sure if you eat food, it will be the best foods. Will you be able to play your sports? Yes, there's lots of room in heaven to play your sports. Not only that, most likely, you'll be able to fly. So all of you who wanted a slam dunk here on earth and never got the chance, you'll get your chance later. Will you be able to see and talk to your loved ones who have passed before you in heaven? Yes, God willing, if they're there, you'll be able to encounter them one way or another. Now the whole point is this, all of the good things that we experience here on earth, whether it's the car that we drive or the house that we live in, or the friends and family that we have, as good as these things are, they pale in comparison to seeing the Holy Trinity as He is. So no more wars, no more suffering, especially for those who suffer from physical illness, no more arguments and fights, especially within the family, no more bad days at work for all of you who hate going to work, and probably much less dislike your boss, no more taxes to pay, all of these frivolous things will cease, God willing, if we get to heaven. But Jesus tells us this, if you want to go to heaven, in other words, if you wish to be my disciple, deny yourselves daily. Take up your cross and come follow me. Contrary to popular belief, getting to heaven simply isn't a walk in the park. It's not like we're accidentally going to end up there. Yes, it was once for us by Jesus dying on a cross, rising from the dead and applied to us during our baptism. But we have to cooperate with His grace. We have to do His will. And if there's one person that doesn't want you to get to heaven, it is Satan. And as the devil tricked Adam and Eve at the beginning of creation, I guarantee you, he will tempt you. And let me tell you something about the devil. He always promises more than he can give. He will tempt us in doing something contrary to the law of God, and if we commit it, He will accuse us. He will say, you call yourself a Catholic, and this is how you treat God. This is how you treat your name. It was very subtle as He tempts Sunday Catholics like ourselves. He tempts us by a spiritual disease called lukewarmness. Lukewarmness is that sickness that causes those who are called to holiness to be indifferent in the advancement of the spiritual. So we may go to church every week like we're doing right now, but right after Mass is over and we leave those double doors, our Catholic Christian life is not existent. Things that we should do on a daily basis, as a Catholic, we neglect. Like, read the Bible every day. Do you maybe take 10 minutes out of your busy day to read sacred scripture, especially the Gospels? Do you pray every day? Maybe at least 5 minutes in the morning and 5 minutes in the evening. Have you stopped learning about your faith? Or did that end after you were confirmed. So the devil will trick us. He'll say, all you have to do is go to Sunday Mass and that's fine. So the struggle to improve as a Catholic is abandoned 
the soul gives into venial sin and anything that has to do with God and the supernatural is reduced to doing things, especially out of routine, rather than actually loving someone, namely God. You know, our Lord spoke of lukewarmness in the book of Revelation. He said, because you are neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth, he says. So as a Catholic in our spiritual life, we are either moving forward or we are moving backward. There is no middle ground. Could we put a price tag on our soul? For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? Well, brothers and sisters, my question to each and every single one of you today is very simple. Is heaven priority in your life? So I'm here again to preach your mission, your Advent mission, which begins tonight at 7 o'clock. I will be preaching about things such as devotion to the Holy Eucharist, to the Blessed Virgin Mary, God's infinite mercy, especially in the sacrament of confession, things that you may have once learned in your life, but maybe forgot. Maybe some of you have never learned to begin with. Either way, these will be tools to help you get to heaven. So if you could make it a resolution to come to the mission, it starts tonight all the way till Thursday. And I realize that all of you are busy. You're busy with your family, you're busy with work, you're busy watching TV. But if there's one reason for you to come to the mission, it's because God wants you to learn more about your faith. So if you could remember this, be rich in what matters to God. When we die, we will take nothing of it with us. Only our faith, hope, and love. And it's not how long we live that matters, it's what we do in the amount of time that God gives us. For some one, five, twenty years, I guarantee you, compared to eternity, it will pass by quickly. So I'm praying for each and every single one of you, especially during this week of our mission. May you persevere, and God willing, after you pass, Jesus will tell you, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. I believe in one God. John the Baptist called people to repentance. He prepared a way for the Lord. 
we make these petitions as we prepare to welcome Christ our Savior. That leaders of the church may continue to call people to turn away from sinful ways. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That men and women entrusted with authority will make justice flourish in our time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That sinners may hear and take to heart the call to repent and to accept the mercy offered by God's only Son. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That all those in our community who endure suffering, rejection, or loneliness may find the fullness of peace in the coming of our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our congregation students, this Advent season, that they approach each sacrament with renewed understanding and appreciation. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, especially <coughs> Annette Mignon, Brittany Higgins, Claire Julian, Teresa Costello, Jane Wayne White, Darlene Jupp, and Liz Hitler, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may see the salvation of God in his kingdom especially Barbara Fisher, Ryan Leopold, and Ray Welsh. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, when your only Son was to come into this world, we were given hope of salvation. With that same hope, we trust you will grant our petitions, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please open your missalettes to number 325.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the laws of the church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come we pray to our rescue with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for He assumed at His first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design He formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when He comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the King of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. <clears throat>
Joseph. He's our mission speaker, I'm sure he spoke to you about that. Uh, the parish mission begins tonight with a conference at 7. Originally, we were going to have a visual mass for the Holy Day, which is tomorrow, but we're not able to do it because of certain liturgical laws. So, tomorrow is the holy day of the Immaculate Conception. It is obligatory for Catholics who are not otherwise impeded by illness or of some other impossibility to come to Mass. It doesn't have to be here. You may have a church close to where you work. So please make plans to go to Mass tomorrow. Mass times are in the bulletin, one in the morning and one in the evening. The conference, uh, I should say, the mission, as I said, begins tonight with the conference at, at 7. We will have a conference each night uh, following through Thursday. There will also be a conference in the morning. Uh, the morning and the evening conferences will be the same, so you don't have to go to two conferences, and most of you couldn't do that anyway. I, I would urge people to come at least to some of the missions. If you're not able to come tonight, for example, you can still come. You can come tomorrow. If you miss tomorrow, you can come the next day and so forth. There will be confessions every evening, 6 o'clock. We're doing this for a couple of purposes. One is for people's general spiritual welfare. And also to help people observe Advent, because many people don't. For them, Advent is just a Sunday thing, Monday through Saturday very busy, and so forth. So try to make some of the mission, at least. You make a good confession, <coughs> pray at home, very important. And uh, I'm sure Father will, uh, his service is here will be very well um, uh, accepted, and uh, it will make an impact on the lives of many people. We give ourselves over to the Lord, we will make an impact on the lives of other people. And that's what God wants us to do. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please turn in your gathered hymnals to number 323. 